with our first guest who was part of the Trump re-election uh, campaign, part of their advisory committee. He's been part of the GOP and he is a uh, commentator in this country. I'm very pleased to say that Paris Denard joins us now on the roof of the Fox News building in a beautiful sunrise here in Washington, D.C. You may have noticed we speak very directly in Australia, mate. How are you? I like it, very directly. <laughs> yeah, we don't muck around. Can't do it. Right between the eyes, baby. That's the way it goes. <laughs> this is real news. <laughs> now, help me out. Um, what attracted you to uh, the Trump campaign particularly? Uh, in both 16 and going into 2020? You know, Donald Trump is somebody who I feel is an aspirational leader, but I also feel he's a transformative leader. Like you were saying, in Australia, you all speak very directly. The president on the campaign trail spoke very directly to what I say the forgotten people, communities that people uh, sometimes overlook. Uh, he talked to the working man, the blue collar worker, and he talked to people that look like me, African Americans here in this country. And he said, What the hell do you have to lose? by voting for me. Give me a shot. Give me a chance. I have a plan. I have some policies in place that I think can uplift your community, which will in turn uplift the entire nation. And so when I look at President Trump, and then at, at the time, candidate Trump, I looked at him as a leader that had a record of results of being someone who understood business, understood the economy, understood negotiation, understood uh, d making a deal. And we needed somebody, in my opinion, who had the executive experience to make the right deals for the country. And as president, uh, I've seen those deals come together. As president, I've seen him lead, live up to the expectation which he set for the country. And so it was no question in my mind that going into 2020, he would be the person, the Republican candidate that I was going to support no matter what, and the person I think is best for the country, more importantly. Do you find it offensive that people think that certain communities should automatically vote a certain way? I think it's offensive that people have this notion that if you look a certain way or you come from a certain area in the country or a certain state, that you have to have a certain political ideology. The, the thing that we should do as, as free voters, free thinkers, is vote for the person who has our interest at, 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 bed, at heart. The person who's going to make the best amount of change in a positive way for my family, for my community. So if you look at your, your, your situation, you say, there's crime here, there's drugs here, there's illegal activity here, there are no jobs, no economic employment, and the schools suck. Well, what am I going to do when it looks at the, the people that are in office? Am I just supposed to stay with them because they have, happen to have a D next to their name for Democrat? My philosophy is, and I think that runs counter the narrative to what you hear in the media here in the United States is, no, vote for the person that may not look like you but has your interest at heart. Vote for the person who's going to make the most amount of change for your community. And in my opinion, it, 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 it is the Republican Party. It is the conservative message that can uplift. Look, people are talking about socialism like never before on the Democrat side. I can't find one, social, one socialist country that has worked are one socialist country that has produced uh, prosperity. But when you look at capitalism, you look at free enterprise, that system that we have in this country is the one system that has uplifted people out of poverty, that is bringing people into the middle class and into the upper class. This is the system that empowers you. And empowerment and freedom and opportunity is something that everyone should celebrate. Are there numbers that show that things have got better for different types of communities under this president? Sure, and that's the best thing that I think that that we can be as, as a selling point for this administration. When you look at unemployment, unemployment in the African American community, which is one I'm particularly uh, passionate about, is at an all-time low of 5.5 percent. But when you peel that onion back a little bit more, 4.4 percent for African adult African American women. Historic lows for Hispanic Americans. Historic lows for Asian Americans. Historic lows for women. Historic lows for disabled Americans. So across the board, when you look at how the how the economy is doing, and what I like to call it, my friend, an inclusive economy, it is an inclusive economy because people are getting back to work. When you look at the consumer uh, indexes and how people are spending and wanting to spend and actually are saving and and trying to get out this debt, uh, student loan debt and, and parent plus loans and 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 all of these things that are happening that impact the economy, on the whole, the economy is doing well, not just for the people that are living in, in, in the you know, high society, but for the average person, for the forgotten people that President Trump talked about right over here on Inauguration Day. Tell me about your story. Where, you, where were you born and how did you get to the rooftop here? Yeah, I don't know how I got here. This is by luck that I got here and I'm happy to be here this morning. But for me, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, a product of a single parent home. Uh, and I was just always passionate about public service and leadership. 
And my mother always said, you can be president of the United States if you want to be. You can do anything that you want to do because you're an American. In America, you can be and do what you want to do. And so through a lot of hard work and faith and support of my family and my friends and mentors, I was able to go to college at Pepperdine University. And then I came out here uh, because I had a dream of working at the White House. And my first job out of college was working for George W. Bush, uh, who was a great friend uh, uh, to the former Prime Minister Howard. Uh, and, and, and I worked there for four years, and I've just been in the political system trying to make a difference for my community and the causes that I care about uh, since the age of 17 years old. You mentioned that, that working for, for uh, George W. Bush, uh, the connection between John Howard, who he called right. the Man of Steel, right. gave him the, uh, the, the Presidential uh, uh, Medal. Couldn't have been a stronger relationship between those Correct. two. What does Australia mean to you? You know what, to me it means an ally. It means a friend. It means uh, that, we, that when you listen to the narrative of the mainstream media that is against President Trump, you, they would have you believe that he has no friends, no support, and no allies. But when you look at the fact that there is something special about the United States and Australia, because President Trump has only had, to this point, one official visit, one state dinner. This Friday, this will be the second one, and it's going to Australia. Out of all the countries, out of all the world leaders, Australia is the one that the president chose because there's a special relationship there. You mentioned it earlier in your promo, how you talked about the similarities between the two, how people didn't think they could do it, and, and, and how uh, they were talking and, and listening to and going after the forgotten people of our country and in Australia. There is something special about our relationship, uh, trading partners economically. Uh, and so when you look at where we're going as a nation, we can only do that when we have the support of our allies. And so it's very special uh, for the United States to welcome the Prime Minister of Australia here. What a thrill to have you on the show. All the best for what I'm sure is going to be a gleaming future for you, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Good on you. Thank you very much. Paris Denard is his name. Uh, that is a name to put in your memory banks. This guy's going to go far.